Yo, 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 this is a video lesson. There was a lot of interest in my arrangement of the Adele tune. Um, I arranged the piano part in the original to, to guitar to be played in like a duo situation. So do leave comments and any requests that you have. I'm going to be putting out tutorials for like my children cover, a load of the EDM stuff, some of my other arrangements which have been quite popular. Um, I'm going to be doing more of these kind of things where it's based based around like duo situations. So you'll be playing with with a singer because I do a lot of that in my day to day um, and you know so that'll be a, it'll probably be a mix of stuff which I'll be which is intended for a singer and also arrangements where I've like arranged the whole song with the melody and everything for solo guitar um, but yeah so tabs will be available and I'm going to start doing more of these tutorials so let me know in the comments share it about subscribe all of that stuff and um, let's get stuck in so first things first, capo on the first fret. I've got my nice shiny gold capo from G7. This isn't a sponsored video, but they're just great. Um, so that puts us in the key of F major. And I might refer to certain uh, chords relative to the capo. So maybe if we're playing here, I'll, I'll say that that's the E shape because people know that, but we're actually in F. And just before I'm going on, so string numbers, for all those that aren't familiar, the low E string is six, the high E string is number one, and then, so it's six, five, four, three, two, one, those are the strings that I'll be referring to. So, let's get started. We start up at the eighth fret, my first finger on the eighth fret, and then um we're plucking that the fifth string and the second and first strings and it's kind of like a sort of slightly arpeggiated and by that i mean so i'm using my thumb index and middle finger and i'm sort of raking i'm not plucking all at the same time i'm kind of spacing out the the plucking of the notes uh, so that, that it sounds a little bit arpeggiated but it's not as that's a bit over exaggerated it's more like so that's the first bit. And then I'm plucking each one of those strings individually. Again with my index and middle. And then hammering on with my ring finger on my picking hand. Onto the eighth fret of the first string. I mean, that's quite tricky. That would probably take some practice in itself. Just getting that down if you're not um, to sort of uh, well practiced with with hammer-ons um it's something to it's something to dedicate some time to and it's, it's all about accuracy the more accurate you are the, the better the sound produced so and then i'm bringing my second finger down on the eighth fret as well with the second string little finger comes down on the ninth fret of the third string and then open e string so that all together is. Easy peasy. Quite a nice little riff. As I'm playing my the the high the open E at the end of that all my fingers have come off the fretboard ready to get into the next position. Because my little finger is going to go and grab that 10th fret low E, which is a D, and then it's the same thing, it's the same riff, except now it's made a lot trickier because your little finger needs to hold that bass note. And then we're doing the same plucking. And then my first finger is hammering on this time the eighth fret of the first string and then my second finger is getting the eighth fret of the second string. And then my third finger is grabbing that ninth fret and then it's the open E again. So that from the top, let's take it slow. Let's start up, let's go again. Mm -hmm. 
then we're sliding down. So after that bit, we're sliding down to the fifth fret and then we're playing the E string again. And this, pat, this uh, chord shape we've got now is my second finger is grabbing that fifth fret and then my third and fourth finger are grabbing the fifth fret of the third and second strings. And then we've got the open high E string and we're pinching both the fifth fret of the E and the open high E. And then, we're, and then we're hitting those two strings there, you'll probably see my picking pattern. So then we're just moving up to, it's basically just like an A major shape, that nice A major shape with the two open strings. So that again, so we're going, And there's that arpeggiated thing again with the open A. And then I'm using my third and second fingers to grab the eighth and seventh fret of the of the sorry, the what is that? The fourth and third strings, respectively. So then I do this little thing just to sort of lead us into the vocal bit. she starts singing or whoever you're playing with. So that intro from the top is like so. And now we're into the verse. So from there, so we're changing it up a little bit and I'll let that B string, that open B string um, sustain for as long as possible before right at the last minute I'm bringing this shape down which is like an F sus2 shape. And that allows, so that's like a bar at the 8th fret and then I've got my 3rd and 4th finger on the 10th fret of the D and G string. And then, so that riff continues. Then I take my little finger off and allow my uh, second finger to get the ninth fret of the G string. Then the open E, open high E. And then we're back at the D. So that going, so going from the intro into the first verse, so it goes. Then I'm getting the this bass note with my third finger um, because of the shape that we'll need to get down after that. So the shape is basically like a D11 chord. If you're familiar with that, I'll put a little chord diagram up of all the of all the shapes to help. That's the shape. So we got the bass note, and then you got your little finger on the tenth fret of the D string as well, which we're hitting, and then we're hitting the high E string open, and then the eighth fret of the B string and then the ninth fret of the G string. And then the open E again. So there's that, there's that riff, you can hear that riff. So it's, um, so, so from the intro into the verse. That's it, so. Then we're going back into this, the same thing, it follows the same thing as the intro. Except this time you're uh, you're fretting the sixth fret to get to, to get that um well it's actually B flat, to get that B flat, and then you're sliding up to a C. And then back to the first riff, and it's again uh, up at the F. Uh, up at the eighth fret for that F, and then we're doing the same thing again. But 
and except this time round, we're going to this. Um, so we're going to the third fret, and we're so my first finger is on the third fret, and then my third and fourth fingers are on the fifth fret of the third and second strings. And we've got that open. That open E is is, is quite uh, recurring throughout, basically. So that's the pattern there. So that's the pattern there, so we go. So after you uh, play that, we're taking the first finger off and then it's the same sort of, you're keeping your two fingers there though. for the first two times and then I slide my little finger up and then I replace. So there's a tricky little thing that's going on here but it's important in terms of the flow of the piece. So after those first two times I play down at the this A shape or B flat, whatever you want to call it. Then I'm sliding my little finger up to get the, that note but then my second finger replaces my third finger on the fifth fret. To allow my third finger to do this hammer on uh, up at the fifth fret of the high E. So it's quite hard to explain, but I guess I'll try and show it to you slowly. So it's so coming down, we're going. So you see that there's a, there's a whole movement going on when we're doing that and then shifting everything. So my little finger comes up, second finger replaces third finger, and then giving it ready to do this hammer on. Now this is a tricky shape, and if your hand isn't having it, then you need to practice that because that's the only thing that can help you there. Um, but then when we're there, so when you practice that and we're all up to speed, we. So then we're just, so we've got this shape where it's kind of like, um, it's, it's basically like a D major shape, but up two frets, and we're using this, uh, this uh, open, ba open A bass note, except it's B flat because we got the cap out. So. Up to A, the, the top end of A, and then back to that D. And then we're into the chorus. So let's take the verse slowly. So we go. Sorry, now it goes. And into the chorus, which is just this power chord up at the eighth fret, and you're just leaving the the sixth, second and first strings open and then we're playing this big. Then we're going down to the fifth fret and I'm using my first finger to mute the low E string this time so I can still kind of like chug away at it and keep up that tempo, keep up that groove without having to sort of think, oh, I've got to miss the first string so I better you know, alter my picking. No, it's all about you using this hand to mute the strings that you don't want to hear, and then this hand can just go crazy. So. Then down to 
the set third fret. Then we're at the fifth fret, but on the e, low E string. And again, I'm using my little finger to mute the G string this time. So it's got this nice kind of like, it's, yeah, I don't know, it sounds a little bit uneasy, that chord. But I quite like it. And then we're sliding down to this, um, this G minor chord. So that's the first time you're actually barring now. We haven't got open strings anymore. We're barring the whole thing. And the rhythm there, that's quite important um, in terms of if, if you want this piece to groove. So. I'm sort of doing that. I'm doing an upstroke and then a downstroke while at the same time my thumb is 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 uh, making contact with the strings to create that you know that familiar percussive sound that a lot of fingerstyle players use um, and then it's an upstroke which is kind of like a an F major or F major in second position so if we, if we it's like if you were so like the E shape and then I'd use my third finger on the fifth fret, first finger on the third fret of the uh, D string, little finger on the fifth fret of the G string. So it's like it's like the second version you you might be familiar with, second version of the open E. Um, so yeah. Then into this A. So I'm doing that. Uh, a normal A, a normal A open chord, and then to an A sus2. Then back to the start. So the, another important thing, I'm just gonna highlight that. So straight away I've got this, this is open, this you can hear this open string now. It's a nice big chord, I've got the low. F as well, but as soon as I slide down to the fifth fret, I'm using this finger. is is going to mute the the low that um, low E string then. So it's all it's a subtle movement, but it's really important um, and important to work on. You know those tiny little subtle movements which uh, help tie a piece together. So. I mean uh, that repeats twice, and then we go back into the to the verse, or or is it the re-intro? I can't remember. Yeah, it's the re-intro. Except now I've got this um, the bass line sort of like pumping away on every beat, um, which makes it a bit trickier. So after that A sus, so we're going. sliding up the slide I'll have my third and fourth finger there but when you're sliding up you you're aiming you know that you're aiming your first finger to get to the eighth fret so as soon as it's there you're just sort of shifting your hand so this is exactly the same as the intro except now you've got the added bonus of your thumb playing this bass note on every beat so it's Ooh. and then we're right back into the verse so yeah so that re-intro slightly trickier I'll play it slowly, to, and um, I'll play it slowly so that you can pro so you can see what I'm doing and hopefully follow along. I think what I do is I don't leave my third finger on there after the hammer on. Um, yeah, I think I bring it off. That makes it a little bit easier for me. Do I do that at the start? 
Yeah, I did that start as well, so all that I said at the start is wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. And it's the same now, so that constant bass line is, is, is um, part of the song, part of the verse now, so we're going... And the verse, so this time we're going straight down to that third fret. Again. So then there's a quick change over this time. So we're going to so the second time for the verses. And this time I'm using these six because I think it's just a bit of variation. It sounds a bit nice. It sounds nice. So it's a. Uh... So. So for the, for for this record, um, I'm not barring. Using that open E. Using that high E as open. But as soon as I switch my little finger up, now I'm bringing the bar down, ready to act as a well as a bar because I'm going to be hammering on from the sec from the third fret to the fifth, and then I'm bringing my I'm bringing the bar off while I'm lowering my first finger to allow for this open string. Same thing, back into a chorus, except I'm not going up here, I'm using a big open E, open F chord, E shape. That's the same though. So that, doing a sort of like little trill thing you can hear you I'm sure you'll be able to work that out if you've gotten this far now we're going into like the bridge which is sort of like this chugging rhythm going on it's the same uh, power chord up at the 8th fret now we're going down to this but I change my shape so I'm not just using the power chord I'm actually shifting everything so I'm, I've got my little finger involved now as well now that's a quite a tricky shape to do it's a bit of a stretch there but worth practicing and I changed the rhythm there as well because the, you'll hear the piano starts bringing in that um, that thing a bit earlier on the strumming so I tried to kind of mimic that with my arrangement but I'm limited a bit, so we're going. Um... Yeah. Then there's that quick change. So you've got time there to make that quick change. Now that's pretty tricky. I mean, it's hurt my hand a little bit actually. So um, worth practicing that. So we're going from there to there. I mean, 
that's a good practice there, like in time. And I'm doing this whole thing because I'm still strumming. I'm I'm getting. I'm not just when when I've got the thing when I'm using finger style. I can sort of pick which notes I, I pluck, so I don't have to I don't have to uh, fret the whole um, the whole chord. But this time, because I'm still keeping that energy of the strumming, I've now got to fret the whole the whole chord. And I'll put the chord diagrams up so you can follow along, and then it's just another chorus. And that's that. Um, I hope that was clear. I hope it wasn't too confusing. I could feel myself getting a bit tongue tied at times, you know, trying to call out the right string or pull out the right picking pattern. But uh, uh, it's probably with the with the cameras closer in and me going for it slowly, and maybe with you following along with the tab. Hopefully things will become a lot clearer and you get some benefit from this. So. Um, do let me know in the comments, subscribe and all that stuff, and then um, I can do loads more of these and try and help people become better guitarists. Okay.